I want to focus uh, specifically on Amos and his leadership style when it comes down to speaking the truth to power. It comes down to speaking the truth to power. There are many uh, incidences that occurred in the Bible, but there are people and uh, that God have used specifically to speak the truth to power. Um, I want us to take this directly to the people who are secular or we're called secular leaders or those who are in leadership in our state or who are in leadership in our nation and figure out basically what is our stand with their situation what is our stand in our place of spiritual leadership how do we operate so let's give a little bit about the history of this man because amos by his particular call is one of of course we know he's one of the minor one of the minor uh 12 minor prophets that operated uh in his day uh coming down from the part of the northern kingdom um again he's part of the part of that judah or what they call a tech here. His leadership style, of course, is characterized uh, by his unwavering commitment to God's truth and justice. A God's truth and justice. And if you look at also pastors and the ministers that are put in situated in states, there are things that God have called you to do that are very close to this case. They have, he, he, he spoke, number one, uh, with boldness, uh, confronting religious and political leaders uh, for social justice and also for corruption. I'm going to break those things down with the word of God. He also uh, have he have also the position where he can be able to speak specifically uh, about power and how power is being prostituted. I have two scriptures, one coming from the book of Amos 1, uh, through, through 2 and through 16. I'm not going to read all that, but I will focus specifically in the one in Amos chapter 5. Uh, verse 7 uh, through 12. Amen. I will focus on that one so that we can be able to see, I uh, will speak about how he dealt with several leaders. I will also speak on basically how he spoke to a specific leader and also cautioning them when it comes down to social justice. We all, in the places of our calling, we have certain opportunities to bring correction to the systems that are in place. What happens most times is that uh, leaders, especially pastors, sometimes we disconnect our heart and our mind from what the environment is saying or what people are speaking in the political scene. Let's look at here what the scripture says in the chapter 5. I will start from verse 7. Amen. It says here, Yet you, he's talking about uh, leaders, you who turn justice to one wood and lay righteousness to rest in earth he made the pleiades and the orion he made the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark as night calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out to the face of the earth the lord is his name he rains ruin upon the strong so that his fury comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who rebukes in the gate and they abhor the one who speaks uprightly. He's talking about kings now and leaders. Therefore, because you tread down on the poor and take grain now watch this. Take green taxes from the him. Though you have built houses to hand stone, yet you shall not dwell in therein. You have planted pleasant vineyard, but who shall not drink wine from them? But I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins, your afflictions, the just and the taxing and the and the uh, and the taxing taxing bribes diverting the poor from justice at the gate therefore the prudent keep silent at that time 
And this is important. They're prudent. These are lawyers. For it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you. And you have again, for you have also spoken. Now, that one of the things about justice is, uh, and they, this people come and speak because in today's world, um, you will think that when you talk about social justice, I, I used to think that it's only a political thing. I myself also uh, feel guilty of that. I used to think it's just a political thing that, you know, people just say things and, you know, because they want one political sin uh, to win the elections or not. God is interested in social justice. I'm not, not the social justice, basically, of the Democratic Party I'm talking about now. God is interested in what happens to the poor. God is interested in what happens in our court system. God is interested in how the poor is taxed. And these are all starting from biblical days. God is interested in how the poor is treated. Uh, and I was actually in a place in my mind when I was being, when I was reminded, if God is just for those people who have already made it, then why will he tell the people of Israel who have big land and big uh, farmyards and vineyards not to extract all the fruits in their land? He told them at the end portion, basically it means at the end portion, of your vineyards, he told them, don't extract the fruit in those areas. Leave them for the foreigners, for people who are coming into your state or coming into your estate. Leave them for the poor intentionally. So if you look at this, God is saying to us as leaders that we have to be intentional how we deal with the poor. We have to be intentional when it comes down to justice. We have to be intentional in our heart how we seek to help people who cannot help themselves. It's not only speaking to pastors, because we are talking about more than the leaders. If you look into chapter 1, which is what I was looking at, chapter 1, from verse uh, uh, 1 through 2, we are dealing with Damascus and Syria. God, de God dealt with them, with this king, ruthlessly, because they basically ruthlessly butchered Gilead without just cause, right? People make decisions. They just decide to fight, but God also watches that, right? In Gaza, because they made, they took captive of free people and sold them into slavery. Free people, we are sold into slavery and God was angry about that. So these are all very, very key and they're very, very important. Now, I want you to imagine what the United States did when it comes to slavery. I want you to imagine what um, United Kingdom did, when, how God dealt with them. I want you to imagine all the nations that took free people, right, and resold them. I'm talking about reselling humans. And I want you to also to think about the churches that supported slavery churches that actually supported slavery apparently in the united states and the united kingdom there were churches who basically were standing behind this and thought that it was the will of god did that stop today no it didn't if you give the opportunity they basically do it again because nobody repented of that and these are all issues of social justice when you bring it up it creates some kind of panic because people don't want to deal with the pain when it comes to what they have done. And truth and the people in power don't want you to remind them of some of the things that they have done wrong. So this particular kingdom, this particular Gaza, God dealt with them because they basically have taken captives and they basically have resold people. You basically are fighting a war. When you fight a war, you took people in. And then you go ahead and resell them. God said he was angry. He was mad at that one. Yes, war. People fight wars. So what this actually saying is that leaders who pervert justice, leaders who uses people, 
leaders who are opportunist, leaders who are corrupted and abused. God said, I am repudiating this. These are not the right cause of action. Now, this is dealing with the secular part in our lives. We are surrounded by these leaders. The first one is, is Tyre, T-Y-R-E, because they ignored the covenant of peace and brotherhood. God said, I'm angry because you have a covenant with your brother or your sister, what I call, see, let's say that there's a fight and there's a ceasefire agreement and you went, somebody went ahead and violated that. God said, I am angry. Why? Because it deals with social justice. It deals with a covenant is a covenant and agreement is an agreement. Then Eden, God, these are kings and leaders. God said he dealt with them because they attacked their own family tribes and showed no compassion. And God said, I'm interested also in the care because you're attacking your own tribes. You're attacking your own family without showing mercy. And now we also have the case of, uh, of Ammon because they murdered women in order to expand their territory. These are situations that God is looking and these are all social justice situation that God intervened. So when you have a prophet like Amos and who some folks don't want to talk about Amos because they think that he's one of those prophets of doom. It's not. He was speaking truth to power. There are certain leaders who are called like that that God had placed fire in the tomb, in, in the in the, in the tomb, if you want to call it that. That fire blows hot because when they see evil, they call evil, evil. The Bible says, woe is any man that calls evil good and call good evil. Woe. And that's the scripture says. So whenever any leader stands in and is quiet about the social justice situation, is an evil before God. Lastly, we have the case of Moab. Moab, because they displayed no respect for leadership in the neighboring nations. I want you to imagine that. So leaders got to be honored. When you don't honor leaders, it's also something that God does not want himself. I want you to look at it. God is king and he's in the set up place. But God also want leaders in all the different nations to be honored. And that's why it is very, it is tricky. I think the United States have one of those rules not to assassinate leaders. Of course, U.S. do it from time to time to some poor African countries, right? Jews and CIA and all. But I'm just saying that in discreet to some of the new uh, ways of saying things or doing things. You're not supposed to assassinate another nation's king, another nation's leader. Who are God, who is God calling today? To speak truth to power. Is that you? Is God calling you to speak truth to power? There are certain things that happen in Amos 5 that I want you to highlight. And they are about six in number. Number one is that these particular leaders, they spoke about abandoned morality. And they also spoke about confused values. They spoke about the poor being taxed to death and for selfish motive of the kings and those in leaders. They also spoke about the, 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 uh, the, the corrupt and the oppressed citizens. Now, it is very, very vital for you to know that when it comes down to the poor, the middle class, of course, on uh, the lower class, at times many powers, not just in the United States, but all over the world, basically ignore or say they are just there. And so when they are making new laws, you are quiet about it. And their laws are being made. And those laws are intentional at times. Those laws ignore those who are on the lower side of life. That like they don't exist. And those laws are made. God said, I am interested in to see how those laws will benefit those ones who are on the lower portion. Without, of course, being a Democrat or being a Republican. You are saying it from God's perspective. Now, we also looks into bribes. Yes, you would think that the first world do not collect bribes. <laughs> That's a dream. Go ask the Supreme Court, one of the Supreme Court, I mean, Justice Clarence, where he's getting all his free benefits from the top class, one of the major 
leaders and part of the history of the person that he was collecting all his good trips as someone who probably have been involved they are found that they have been involved in slavery going back so at times when the justices in our systems are corrupt they're not corrupt by you giving them direct money that's why we have to spend time and pray for those in leadership including those who are also in the supreme court because of course that's we are the highest law level of the land if the supreme court justices are corrupt i wonder what kind of justice is going to serve a person most of our focus go into the legislature and our time is also spent to pray over those who are in the executive we do that but have we taken some time to look at those who are in the justice systems those who make laws and those who finalize laws where their heart is at whether they call their bribes or not many of them do they just do it in a very high level sophisticated way some are kickbacks so we got to spend time and talk to god about these justices especially when they are being placed in power that god will not allow those evil leaders or evil justices to be in place who got an agenda most of them stay there for life they are work time life they are in place corrupt leaders corrupt orders you also have those who are corrupt and then the oppressed citizens you also have those those who took bribes and the deprived people of justice in the court now this particular one is the word say that they turn away the people of god they turn away the poor they turn away the one that can afford it there's one system that we know in place that many companies uses I know that many people already know about that. How do they delay justice to the person who don't have it? Okay? Now, these folks can afford lawyers for a lifetime. They keep paying their lawyers. So it doesn't matter whatever your law should say, they will ignore it. They will ignore it because they know that you can't stand to pay lawyers for life. But they got enough money to keep their lawyers in place and keep that court and keep that case. So that case will never, nothing is going to be done about it. And this is how the people who are in quote the world called the nobodies will not receive justice because the system is actually made for the rich and not made for the poor. So as leaders, there are certain things that we must engage in ourselves in our prayer when it comes down to those in leadership and how we should stand uh, with God when it comes down. Another area of our leadership style of, of, of uh, this man Amos is, is, is in his prophetic message hallelujah it emphasizes the importance of justice and righteousness Amos 5 24 state but let justice and this is I think we have read this many times when it come down to um, a great leader right who bro who is the who is the number one when you come down to social justice in the United States Martin Luther King he says but let justice rule on like as a river and righteousness like a never failing stream this verse is basically highlighting the importance of justice and righteousness in the eyes of god it calls for action hallelujah for more than the church leaders it's calling for action to stand for social justice it's calling for action now when we talk about social justice we're not talking about those who are just in your church hallelujah because as a moral leader you should lead past the people in your church as a moral leader you should lead past the people in your church you should see the entire community that god assigned you you should see the state of your state thank you holy spirit you should see the state of your city and you should see the state of your neighborhood now you as a pastor in a location you are a minister assigned by god you taking some time to look at the state of your community spiritually the state of your community emotionally a state of your community financially the state of your community when it comes down to the schools and the public atmosphere at times we always ask god to promote us and get us before kings and leaders but have we asked ourselves the place he have already given to us is god giving us the power to speak to power did God just keep you there to just be in the status quo? God gave you power to speak to power. It's only power that can speak to power. 
At times you have some folks who they say they are very vocal, they are very bold, they are very called. This is the Amos of our time. Yes, what if God assigned you to be the Amos of your time in your city that speaks truth to power? One of the biggest things that people just shrink and they don't want to say it. But look at what we have kind of deriving from here. What of Martin Luther King have been quiet and said, I don't want to deal with this stuff because it's too much, right? I don't want to worry about this. There was threat on his life, he yet spoke. There were abuses, he yet spoke. There were corruption, even, even within the church itself, he yet spoke. There were leaders in the churches that told him to be quiet, not to say that much. He yet what? Spoke. Because we have to utilize all that God gave us in our within our breath to speak truth to power. We cannot be just leaders just in our churches and be quiet for every other thing that is occurring in our city, in our town, because we are trying to be nice to everybody. But look at the prophet Amos. He took boldness and spoke to the power. And that might engage you to be in a public sphere when evil is occurring. God is saying to us, you as a leader cannot call evil good. Whether it's in the justice piece, whether it's in the part of the legislature, whether it's in the part of the executive. But God is saying to us, we have to also look at the judges and ask God and speak to the power. Another aspect of Amos leadership, which is talking to us today about response. Hallelujah. Chapter 7, verse 14 to 15, records the response. It's a Mazariah, the priest of Bethel, who has ordered him to stop prophesying. He said, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I am a shepherd. And I also took care of Sikkim of fig tree. But the Lord took me from trending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. So you are not going to just sit down there and people will not attack you because you are speaking. They like you to be in a nice quiet place. Stay here, brother. Stay here and stay a pastor and just do what you are supposed to do. So when God is opening your eyes to see the evil that is occurring in your town and you're quiet about it, something is wrong. Amos is one of those ones that God said, uh-uh, you're not going to be quiet. I got something I want you to say, the truth to power. And that's what he was actually sounding the alarm here. Amen. So that he can understand. So he was speaking the truth to power. Amos' response again is about what we should do today in the modern day as leaders. As opposition grow, he faced. Modern day leaders should be willing to step out in boldness. And speak to the power. So you know, overall, for you and myself, we must confront injustice. Hallelujah. We must confront corruption. We must confront the unwavering commitment of God's calling service as an inspiration of the church today. When we talk about social justice and we talk about righteousness, let righteousness reign like a stream. Since it is not natural for people that want to follow leadership, that want to follow authority, it is not natural. When bribes are being collected and when things are happening in different systems and we are aware of it, let's flip the coin and look into our states. What do our states stand for? What is our state doing? It's very, very easy for us to just be quiet because we don't want to uh, be associated with people that protest, right? We're not talking about public protest now. We're talking about you yourself, who God has put as a mouthpiece to release word to your mayor, to release word to the governor, to release word to those in the, who are secular leaders. I'm beginning to trust God at times. Leaders need to go to some of those board meetings. Yes, those school board meetings. I'm believing that Christians as leaders will begin to turn flip things around and begin to go to where those decisions are made. I believe it's becoming important because we cannot just isolate ourselves from all the men and then when they're already done and decisions are made and we just accept them and say that's exactly what it is. So I pray the Lord with grace today and with strength that he will give us the opportunity for us to take our leadership to the next level. Dealing with our own corruption. 
the corruption in our city. And we also have to stand up as this man who stood against evil and, the, and then the dreadful day of judgment. We will have a joyful celebration if we'll understand what God has called us to do. Remember, light shineth and darkness cannot comprehend the light. God is a God of righteousness. God is a God of justice. God will not support any opinion, no law that will keep his people behind. Know this and know this is fact. If that particular decision that is made, it's going to hurt the poor and you see that and you're quiet about it, you are part of the group who wants to stone Jesus. Even though we might not look at it from that perspective. When Jesus was being killed, some people were quiet about it. They are taking the part of, I did not cause the problem, so I should not step in. God is saying to you, for you to be a relevant leader, you are not going to be quiet when there's evil, when there's immorality on the land. When people are just being marginalized, when people are being trunked and put on the side and pushed away, when the, when the blessings are coming and the poor are being put on the side, like they don't qualify, like they don't even, actually they are made a second and third citizens. God is saying to you, your eyes should be on also on helping the poor. Stop here because of our time. Again, remember, you are the mouthpiece of God. Amen and amen.